right. Well, it is the top of the hour. We will go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy March. Um, I know lots of fun things going on. Hopefully you did some fun things on St. Patrick's Day. Maybe spring break might be going on. Um, if not, it's just everything starting to come back to life and um, start to bloom and stuff. I think spring green is one of the most beautiful colors in the world. It's just like my personal favorite. Just reminds me of life again and stuff. Um, so happy March to everyone. We have a very special speaker today. We are very excited to hear her speak. Um, we were looking around in the Lady Titans group um, of like who kind of is engaged a lot and who is commenting and, and responding in, in our social media groups. And Chris was one of those people. And so, um, you know, Lady Titans is all about empowering women in the trades and connecting them and so um we're very happy to spotlight one of our own and so i want to introduce uh miss chris smith she's going to talk to us today about developing high performance teams but with a healthy culture i know sometimes it can be one or the other but she's going to talk about how we can do both and so chris has spent 20 years in the home service trades including plumbing gas remodeling hvac and electric she holds a journeyman electric electrician license and most recently she's joined powerhouse consulting group to be part of the first service titan titanium professional services provider it's a mouthful um <laughs> owned and operated by women who also come from the trades. she fell in love with the trades largely by accident but found purpose and fulfillment in helping others reach their success so let's welcome chris to the to the stage if you will hey chris hi nice to meet everybody i see a lot of familiar faces um and obviously, of course, you know, I'm on Lady Titans a lot, super opinionated, you know, I can't help myself. <laughs> but I'm, I'm excited to see everybody here. Um, so we're going to talk about developing high performance teams with healthy culture, because we've all worked in environments where there's been a high performance culture, but we've also worked in environments where there was great, like really laid back, easy culture, right? Like, can you have a combination of the two? Yeah, you absolutely can, right? So we, we want to share a little bit about how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. Everybody can see that slide? Yes. Fantastic. All right. So thank you for the lovely intro, of course. That was really sweet. <laughs> you make me sound much cooler, much cooler than I really am. Yeah, um, you didn't have to make anything <laughs> up. That was all you. <laughs> so we, we know that company culture is basically your company's personality, right? That it, It's a nice, easy way to reference that. And a high performance culture is going to be a personality built on accepted behaviors and standards that are defined by your leaders that you encourage consistently, but those leaders are going to provide tools and processes because you want your employees engaged and working as effectively as possible to achieve goals. There are a lot of ingredients that go into this to say, hey, what? how do I make it high performance and make it an environment where these employees want to work, right? If it's too competitive, it's not going to gel. So these are the elements that I believe really have to be like in this cake that you're baking. So continuous learning and development, right? We all talk about to our employees about, you know, we bring them on as apprentices, we put them through school, um, then they become technicians, we help them pass their tests. Well, you want to do that at every level of your organization, right? There are no helpers. There are only apprentices, installers, technicians, et cetera, right? No labor, just people People have goals and aspirations and in a high performance culture that's healthy, you're gonna help them achieve those, right? Whether it's a CSR in your office who wants to become a marketing person, you know, or a lead CSR, a customer service manager, um, your accountant wants to learn more, right? Support that at every level. Effective management. How many people have promoted someone because they were an awesome technician to field supervisor 
and then did not train them on how to manage people or how to coach. You know, that it's critical that we support people in those management roles so that they can be effective with everybody on the team, right? They they don't, they're not going to innately know how to do that. They they need to be trained to be effective so that they're not wasting time, so that they're being supportive and not um, you know, not everybody has high EQ, right? They 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 need to be told how to talk to people. Autonomy. I'm sure everybody's worked for a micromanager before. It and a lot and it is a trap that a lot of people fall into when we promote technicians to leadership roles, right? Because they're so used to doing that they think, oh well, I can do it myself and I can do it faster and I can do this, right? And then but then they're crushing the will of your people to succeed and thrive, right? And it's not an intentional thing. They're not doing it to to make anybody feel bad, but it happens and then you lose good people who could have been developed. So you want to develop an environment where your employees have enough guidance to know what to do and they know they have a a safety net. They can call and, and get support but they don't, you know, don't need to breathe down their necks. When we say inclusivity, we're going to, we mean you want to source opinions across your entire environment. So in our current company, we just did an employee survey, right? Top to bottom anonymous about, you know, what was onboarding like? What, what are the tools that we provide? Like, how do we feel about our current culture? What, what would you do differently, right? You need to be keeping a pulse on your team at every level consistently, at least once a year, twice a year, once a quarter, you know, and then listen to what they tell you and take action on those changes, right? If you do the survey, but then you do nothing with it, which we've all been places where that happens, why bother taking the survey, right? It, you, need, you need to act on that. It's really important. And give credit for great ideas. You know, it, great ideas come from everywhere in the company and the people who are closest to the clients are going to have amazing ideas that will improve the health of your organization. And some of them, they'll, they'll make some mistakes. That's okay. But they need to feel like they can volunteer things and that you will act on them. You don't have to act on everything, right? We're not having Taco Tuesday every Tuesday, but, you know, within reason, right? And live and breathe company mission and values. Everybody's had that time where there's an older technician that we haven't wanted to lose because of the tribal knowledge they have and they're super highly skilled, but they don't follow what our current company values are and our current company mission, right? And that's a hard thing to deal with. I can tell you I've lost a top performing technician who was 30 years in the trade. He decided he would rather retire than learn new things. That's okay, right? We get attached to our people and we wanna keep them and take care of them and, and we should. Those are important qualities to have in a healthy environment. But nobody in your organization is above the company mission and values. And and that goes for your leaders, technicians, apprentices, your office staff. Everybody needs to be on the same page. Uh, One of my favorite HR directors says that an organization is one band, one sound. Um, Open communication, the last four on here, right? Communication, respect, transparency, and trust, they go together. You can't have only part of this, right? It's like having a dented wheel. It's just not going to work. Your team always need to believe that they can communicate with you. Yeah, you can do now. What was that? I think someone um, might have been answering a phone. Sorry. Uh, No, no, it's fine. Um, The... You can't always be as transparent as you would like to be when you're a leader, right? There are times where there's going to be information that you can't share 
yet or can only share with some people. As long as you are consistently honest, that's okay. Employees have a different perspective on your overall environment based on what they do and what they understand of your organization. So if you want somebody to buy in and become more engaged, you need to share more with them. So when you're thinking about transparency, think about how much you hold back and why, right? What can you share with them to help them understand better? Why care, right? What's in it for us? <laughs> you know, maybe your company is working just fine. Good. Maybe everything is okay, but not great. That's fine. But if you would like to have less turnover, if you'd like to have people who are providing you ideas internally and aren't afraid to fail, you know, they're engaged and they're providing increased revenue and they're committed to each other's success. That's amazing. And it's really hard to replicate and it requires a consistent effort, right? You, you know, it's like getting healthier or losing weight or you, you can't just say, well, I'm going to go to the gym on Monday and then in February, I'm not going to do anything, right? It, it has to be consistent, but these are documented outputs that you will have, right? It, it exists. It will happen. Some competition is a good thing, right? But it has to be healthy, right? When there's too much competition, people start backstabbing. They start trying to trick your sales metrics. They start, um, you know, finding ways to to short the customer, right? Instead of taking care of everybody. And it's it's tempting for people to make who are normally good people to make poor choices in a high stress environment like that. So the goal here is to have some level of competition. You want to reward high performers, but you do not want your team sniping at each other because that's where dream starts. And that's where you start to have problems where people are not doing what's best for your organization. They're only doing what's best for them. Couple of quick stats I found about this. So. Businesses with extremely healthy culture, one and a half times more likely to average 15% revenue growth over three years. What could you do with 15% revenue growth? And we all talk about, we hear all the time, it's so hard to find good people. It's so hard to find people in the trades. You know, society is telling them they all need a four-year degree and they're not coming to our companies. They are out there. And your company culture matters. You know, 46% of seekers said the company culture was important when they applied. And 47% said poor company culture is the driving reason that they were seeking a new job. You know, that adage where people don't leave jobs, they leave managers. It, this is part of that, right? If they're not engaged and they're not happy and they're not, feeling like they're being challenged professionally and supported in their growth. And there are people who they don't want to see on a day-to-day -day basis because their energy is really negative. They're going to start looking for another job. You want to retain the people who care and the people who will put in that extra discretionary effort because they're engaged and they believe in your mission. And you need to listen to them and take action based on the things they tell you in order to accomplish that. Um, our current performance management strategies don't work in a lot of cases, right? Only 46% of employees said they saw positive results. So what that means for us is, are we still in a rut where we're doing just an annual review and you know they come on board, you do your 90 day and then you do an annual review? If so, it's time to break that pattern. Now is the time to say, hey, we need to do one-on-ones. We need to be consistent with them. And we need to do them for every employee in our organization. And they need to happen on a regular schedule. 
You can do unofficial check-ins where you, you just allocate 15 minutes on your calendar and then they're going to go ahead and you're going to talk to them a little bit about who they are as people, what their goals are, what's their driving motivation. Are they happy? How do they feel about their job? Is there anything, if they could change one thing, what would it be? And then help them set goals that work for them. 89% of employees want a sense of purpose. That means that a bunch of those people are not getting it, right? If they want to know why you do what you do. They want to know why your company, why you and not the electrician down the street, right? What's special and unique about your company? And what that is, is your culture, your mission, and your values. Hands down, every time. So the how, right? This is going to vary for a lot of people. Um, but there are some things that you can do consistently. If you have not sat down and done a values and mission statement, go ahead and book that on your calendar. It's really important. And it is, it can't just be a list on the wall, right? You know, we see them posted in so many companies, right? They're in the break room and they're up there and people walk past them and and okay, that's great. Like, you know, we pat ourselves on the back and we say, oh, we did a good job. We put it up. It's everywhere. We got it. Check. This is not a checkbox activity, right? You cannot pencil whip your values in your mission statement, okay? Don't Google them. Don't, you know, just come up with them by sitting down with a list of your employees, get your entire leadership team together and say, okay, who are the rock stars in your company? Why are they rock stars? What is it that they bring to the table that we value the most? And then look for those consistencies across those employees, right? Because those are what are going to be the bones of your company values. And for those of you on here who are moms or dads, you know, it's on my blog on the, uh, Every, if your kid can do a really good imitation of you, then they finally heard what you said, right? Like my kid does it and, and I'm like, okay, she finally heard me. But, it, but it's true, right? They need to be able to parrot it back to you. And they need to be, they need to be cognizant that, that, that it matters to you. You need to demonstrate that it does because you have to live the values as well as they do. Reward people based on behaviors that align with your values. So every time you have a meeting that involves your whole company or your whole team, talk about the mission, review the values, give out a spot award for somebody that has done something that aligns with the values. It doesn't have to be a lot, right? $25 gift card to, to get lunch that week, Greg, right? Send them something mission barbecue. But if they're working with an apprentice and you've seen that they did an amazing job and one of your company values is employee development, right? Spotlight that. Show them that it matters, that you see what they're doing and that you care. And make sure you spread that around so that you're not consistently just rewarding the same people. You want to see everybody striving to accomplish these things, right? So. It, it means a lot and it makes a huge difference to an employee. And one of the things that we've done successfully at my, at my last company was let other leaders in your organization be the one that gives the award because then your employees say, oh, they did see me and they talked about it and other managers are now talking to me, right? Build up that familiarity. It, it really is important that people feel seen and heard. I cannot stress enough that acting on the feedback that you get is, in, is critical. You'll get some feedback that's, you know, one person having a disgruntled day. Okay. But when you're hearing a consistent theme, act on it and give credit. 
they will be more likely to share brilliant ideas with you if you're okay when they fail. No great success was ever achieved without falling on your face a bunch of times first, right? We all make mistakes and it's important to use them as learning opportunities to, to springboard into a better thing. Maybe, maybe the process change didn't work. Okay, now we know. What did we learn? What will we do better next time, right? It's, it's important that we have that kind of helpful coaching process in place so that people won't be afraid to try new things in your organization. Because if you're not, if you're just stagnating, you're not growing, right? That's when your business is dying. Communication among your team members should be as easy as possible. At Powerhouse, we all work in a remote environment. So we use Slack and we have a bunch of different channels. Some are for teaching each other new things. Some are for celebrating each other's wins um, and company wins because what's good for us is good for the company. And we have some lighthearted time built into our week as well for getting to know each other, right? As human beings and connecting, you know? And I think, so it doesn't matter if your environment is remote, partial remote, in-person, you can achieve this in your company. Don't be afraid to let your technicians and dispatcher and service manager have a, like a text chain, right? Or Slack channel. Like that's totally fine. But don't build walls between them, right? Let your dispatcher be part of that team. When you celebrate that win, you know, maybe they hit thousand Google reviews. When my team did that, I took them all out for ice cream, shut the office down 30 minutes early and we all went out and it was great. And everybody got, got along and had a good time. You know, it's, but they need to know who each other are as people, right? To care about them. Joe, the technician can't just be a guy that comes in and clocks in and does his work and goes home. And you know what his skills are because you set them up in service time. That's part of who Joe is. But maybe Joe's also a husband. Maybe he has three kids. Maybe he likes to be off early on Thursdays. And just can't work over that day because his kids have soccer practice. If you know that, you can help him achieve his goals while he achieves your goals. But if you don't ask these people genuinely, and they can tell if you're faking. So this is not a fake it till you make it situation. This one is a believe that you want to know who these people that work for you are. And that you care about what's important to them. Take good notes. Keep those notes, right? Have, if their dog is sick, check in with them, right? Ask them about it. You know, maybe a kid broke their arm. Ask about these things. Ask them how Sophia's softball game went, right? She, they need, people need to be seen and heard and valued. And they can't do that if they're anonymous. If, if your company has gotten to a size where you don't know anything beyond your people other than their names, then you need to change that. And it's so easy to do. Every one of you on here can do it. Everybody can do it. It's It just starts with asking a couple of questions. Now, the biggest threat to open communication that I've heard about making it easy is well, what if the technicians have a chat and then someone gets on, they're having a bad day and they start slamming a customer and now they're, and now it's all negative. Yeah, you run a risk that that will happen. The good is going to outweigh that. And the way to handle that is going to be to have dispatcher or, or manager on the chat or a lead technician, field supervisor, right? Who sees anything going south and addresses that privately with that person outside the chat. Hey, see you're having a bad day. You're, you know, you're bashing Mrs. Jones. This job is, that's not cool, man. That's not the kind of vibe that we're going in here. Let's talk about it, right? What's gone wrong? How can I help you? Right? We're not taking, we, we don't want to take it from a perspective of, of consequences and punishment. What we're looking for is respect, right? 
Why are they feeling that way? How can we help turn it around? What you'll find is that once you address it that way, the employee is going to get back on the chat and be like, you know what? I'm sorry, man. That wasn't cool. Everybody, I'm just having a bad day and I'm going to take care of that. And they'll see that it's okay to be vulnerable because they're not going to get jumped on. They're going to be helped. Continued education doesn't need to just be professional. We have a lot of young people coming into the trades. We're all working with multiple generations now, and they don't know what they don't know, right? How many of you have seen people come in and the guys, and then they're going out drinking on the weekends, but they have a long-term girlfriend who might like for them to buy a house, right? Maybe they want to buy a new truck. Or maybe they want to go on vacations, right? Maybe experiences are important to them. Help, hook them up with your financial advisor. Why not? You stand, you stand to lose nothing, right? Financial advisors that work for your company often very excited to have anybody to talk to about what they do. And they'll because most people don't want to hear about money, right? They don't, they don't want to go into their budget. They don't like, that's not an exciting conversation for anybody who's not a finance person, but it can really help your team, right? Bring the finance person in, let them talk to them about 401ks, explain to them about setting up budgets, right? It, these things, what matters to your employee needs to matter to you. And then smart goals for everybody. This will happen in your one-on-ones, but it needs to be specific, right? It needs to be measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound, okay? You can't set a goal that says, we're going to achieve this much revenue per quarter, and then send them off and go, okay, good job. No. We're going to sell, you know, if we're going to serve X number of customers in this time period th at this dollar amount. Is that a reasonable goal? What have you done before, right? Are you sh are you shooting for 200% growth? Might not be possible, right? Start smaller and give it a time bound and then check in, right? You need You can't just set a goal here and then do nothing until the end. And then you go, well, you failed. It doesn't, it doesn't help. And then people feel unsupported and the bottom will drop out. So set a great goal and then help them smash it, right? And then when they hit the end of that goal, go ahead and do a post-mortem on it, right? We all watch the, the crime shows on TV, right? We want to know what went well, what didn't go well, what would they change? What factors held them back from being wildly successful at this task? And then the next goal we set is better based on that additional information. So I want to I want to leave you guys with this book. Patrick Lencioni has written so many books, and I'm sure a bunch of you have read some of his stuff. I really like this one. So he talks about what makes a job miserable. A job is miserable if the person feels irrelevant, right? Like what they do does not mean it. If it's not measured, what does a good job look like? How do I even know if I'm doing a good job? And if they feel like they're anonymous, right? They just come in, they're just a number, right? That those three things can make literally any job on the planet miserable, right? Sometimes we think, oh, well, geez, it'd be great to be Taylor Swift, right? But there are probably, if she if she had these problems, she would be miserable too. And it, these are easy things to change, but you have to be consistent. Every single day, chip away at it. If you don't like the culture you have now, just start today. Put 15 minutes on your calendar and go and talk to a couple of your technicians. Go and talk to some apprentices, right? It, ask them who they are and then figure out which thing in your job can be measured so that they know they're doing a good job. So 
I wrapped on that a little earlier than I had anticipated, but what questions would anybody have? Yeah, that was great. Thank you, Chris. Thank We're going to open up the floor to questions. Um, you can just verbalize them, or if you can't get off mute, you can put them down in the chat and I can read them out for you. But um, Chris, I was taking notes and had so many things that I was pick picking up on. Um, like one thing you pointed out that I really liked was rewarding people based on your values and not just the performance. And sometimes I think we can be so focused on the performance and the numbers and things like that, that we can lose sight of our core of what we are as a company and what, why we do what we do. Um, and so I thought that was, you know, that, that, that resonated with me a lot. Absolutely. Because yeah. Cause if you reward the behavior, the results will come, right? If they're, if people are doing consistently, they're following your estimating process and giving good, better, best options. And they're, they're treating customers the way they want their mom to be treated. Like whatever it is in your business, if you reward that behavior, the profit, the revenue, it all follows. But instead of rewarding at that end, reward at the beginning, reward during, right? That's how you drive real change. No, that's great. Thank you. Louise, I see you have your hand raised. Oh, did, she... did we just lose Louise? I think we might have. Uh oh. All right, Lauren. I'm here. I'm, here. I'm, here. I'm sorry. I must have hit the button. Sorry. Yeah, I, I believe it's important to know your team. Um, and that goes with everyone, not just your department, because, um, you know, if you're doing the disc, also it's important to know what how they work so you can mesh with them. Or if you're doing Instagram, you know, you that's also another personality that you can go about with. Um, and performance in all departments is important as well. And they kind of work with each other because not only just one team is getting performance pay, everybody is getting that. And so they all know what they're working towards and gaining and um, getting excited for, you know, I want to see them excited when they leave. I want to see them excited when they come in. And, and that's, that's a real challenge. It is. And, and you're absolutely right that it needs to be across the whole company, right? Like a lot of us have tried things like performance pay for technicians, but then apprentices aren't earning anything extra or your CSRs aren't earning anything extra or your dispatcher, right? Like come up with metrics that that can be assigned across all the divisions so that when, when the team wins, they all win, right? It, you're absolutely right. And people who are excited to come to work give you more discretionary efforts, right? They're going to be the people who, when you say, hey, I have one more job at the end of the day, I know it's really late. When you get five people who go, yeah, I'll take care of that sweep off, no problem, right? Then you you're, you know you're winning in that moment. And one of the things that we did at, um, at Chesapeake Electric, where I used to work, is that when people onboarded to the company, we would have them sit and do rotations with everybody in the company during their first 30 days, right? They would, every different role, they, you know, my apprentices, my technicians, they're sitting in the call center so that they can learn how does this work and how does this affect my life? They see what the dispatcher does. They go and see the accounting department. So they understand why when the numbers don't come across right or they don't turn in a check, why that matters, you know? And if you can get them believing in each other and rooting for each other, it, it's something magical. No, that's great. I have a question. I have um, some of our CSRs that um, are very competitive, um, some more than others, but, and we try to, um, every week we have a, a meeting, a staff meeting with all of our CSRs and disp uh, technicians, everybody in the whole company, we have a weekly meeting and we try to point out like the top three you know, producing technicians, uh, CSRs, but we have one in particular that if their name is not mentioned for the next week, she makes it very hard on the rest of the company. And she'll point out, you know, every little 
problem, every little detail, and um, and then they'll try to kind of manipulate the system per se. Mm -hmm. And to, to and you know, the more and more we have to dig and the more and more we have to find out. It, you know, how, how can we put a stop to that, but encourage her at the same time and encourage, you know, good behavior and, and, and for her to like, be, be glad and be happy that, you know, it wasn't, it was maybe somebody else that was recognized and not that, the you know, yourself. And that's sure. kind of like where we, I'm having an issue right now and it's kind of hard. Have you pulled her aside to have a, like a one-on-one, -on -one, like take her out for coffee and, and ask well, her to point out that states. she's doing that? We live in different states? Yes. Okay. So maybe do a Zoom coffee chat with her okay. and, and pull her aside and say, look, I don't know if you're aware that you're doing this because she genuinely might not be aware of this behavior. And and come at it from an understanding point of view, because which it sounds like you would, right? You know, yeah. like, hey, I don't know if you're aware of this, but when you don't win, you behave in a way that is off-putting to the rest of your team. And instead of being happy for their wins, because we're a team, and if one of us wins, we all win, you know, you, you're bringing some negativity to the table. Why do you think that might be, right? And then leave the awkward silence, right? Let her fill it in because you you still want her to be accountable for her behavior and how she behaves to the rest of the team. But, but it's important that you do a little bit of a dive with her on that and then get a commitment for her to try to work on changing that, right? Um, if it doesn't change, I would question whether she's the right fit for your environment. Yeah. But because, yeah, I mean, you know, we've it, had several conversations over the years. Um, and, you know, I think the one thing that, you know, was always brought up is, well, you know, I book the most calls. I do this, I do that, you know, and it's like, okay, well, you know, we are a team. Like, this is not a competition. Like we've even taken away like the monthly incentives away. And mm -hmm. I'm about to take away announcing the the top, uh, you know, three producing um, CSRs in our meetings just because it's so, um, you know, it, it's just right there in your face. You can you it's everybody can feel it. Everybody can see it. Yeah, and then and then it feels palpable, right? Like there's that tension and and mm -hmm. and discord. What if you rewarded the team overall for team goals instead of just like top performers what that's if we a, made it more collaborative idea. yeah that yeah. is a great idea I would try that rather than just cutting off incentives altogether um I would look and see what do you need out of the CSR team as a whole to accomplish the number of calls you want booked on your jobs um the customer you know, are they being proactive? What's your cancellation rate like, right? Look at look at those sorts of measurements um, and and assign them to the whole team and see if maybe she maybe it's possible that she would end up changing her tune and becoming more of a, a cheerleader for the others if they right. were all in it together. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. I I, I love that idea. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was course. awesome. And is there a way to run a report in Service Titan for an overall score? Yeah, there. Yeah, if you have the custom report set up, the uh -huh. you can run um, leads and call reporting and and tinker with it to get exactly okay. what you're looking for. Yeah. Thank and you if, so you know, much. Of course, and if you need any help setting it up, just be glad to help you. Oh, awesome! Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. I think you were kind of starting to hit on it. Like if she's not able to adapt or kind of realize some of these things and change her ways, like she might not be the right fit for your company. But I think kind of going back to what you said at the beginning, Chris, is like you've got to have your core values and what the company stands for clearly defined and everyone is aware and knows of it because it makes it a whole lot easier to be like, hey, you truly do not align with us as a company. You are not echoing what our core values are. And it when you do have, if you have to make a hard decision, you have something there that 
gives you a leg to stand on, if you will. So I think further reason of why you need to have those things set in place before the waters get rocky. Right. You're right. Absolutely. One of the things that um, when I was a leader in previous organizations, we would do a right fit, right seat survey a couple of times a year just to make sure that team members that we had, you know, you score them like zero to two, right? And you do your leaders as well. You know, zero is does not align. One is aligned some of the time. Two is yes, they're practicing it. And rank everybody in your company according to how they align with your company values. Because then you can really see, like, you can teach anybody to do anything, right? Skills are 100% trainable. What you can't change is who people are. And that's why it's really important when we're hiring people that we hire them for who they are. Because a lot of decisions that we make when we're under the gun, we hire for skill and then we fire them later for who they are. And that's the wrong way around, right? Wow, that's, that's a, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Lauren, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, so I have a question for, I guess, people who don't report up at all um, or people that that do. What feedback does anyone have about how to encourage this upwards in the org chart instead of just down to the people that report directly to you? Um, because sometimes there's a lot of buy-in from I'll just, you know, maybe lower levels, but at the top, it's it's a little bit more of a struggle. So I guess for people that don't have someone that they report to, how would you want someone on your team to come to you and identify that there may be an opportunity to improve in this area? Or if you um, do have people that you report to, how how would you handle it with them? That is such a good question. So with your, like, say your leadership team, right? They need to buy into this, right? It's what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Like they have to do it. If they are not, when you rank your employees by how they're doing for values, you start with your leadership team and your leadership team goes into a room and you rank each other, right? And the first time you'll all probably be a little bit softer on each other than you should be. And then the second time you do it, everybody is going to be like, no, you know what? We have this value of employee development and you're really not living it. You haven't sent any of your people to training. You know, they're coming to other managers and they've got problems. You know, your apprentices aren't progressing into technicians, right? Like, and then you start really dialing in like, so, and, and you don't do it in a spirit of attacking each other, right? But you need your leadership team to be willing to be vulnerable enough to be like, you know what? You're right. I, I haven't done enough there. Is there somebody who else on the leadership team, one of my peers, who can help me, right? Help me find a way to be better at this to align with the values. But they have to be open to learning, right? It's, we, I would highly recommend 360 reviews. So when, when you do, do one-on-ones with your leadership team, right? Maybe your COO meets with the CEO every week and they talk about what their personal goals are and what their company goals are and what they're going to achieve. And then they hold each other accountable. But then you also, the direct, like the division leaders, right? Have them provide feedback on the people above them, right? You know, hey, you did a great job helping me with this problem, but I feel like you don't have enough time for me and I would prefer something more structured, right? It helps them get what they want, but leadership just really need to be aware that they're not going to only hear good things. And that's okay. We don't learn by everybody telling us at a boy all the time, right? As leaders, it's our job to serve the people beneath us in the company because everybody brings value to the organization. And we're instead of being the people who do the things, we're now responsible for the people who do the things. So they let them have let those people all have a voice, right? I think first step is probably just being willing to have the conversation and do a self-analysis to realize where you might have some flaws or areas you can improve upon. Absolutely. And here's the thing, like we all think that we're hiding the things that we're bad at. We're not. When you get into the room with the leadership team and you start talking about it, you're going to realize really quickly that they do know who you are and they do know what you're not great at. And that's okay. Right. Because that gives you somewhere to start and somewhere to improve to. Yeah. 
Such a great question, Lauren. Thank you. Ashley, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a question. So um, if we are hiring employees based on shared values, um, how do we how do we make sure that we're aligned on those values before we get too far down the rabbit hole and now we find out, hey, um, they had the skill set, but they didn't have the value piece. We have our, um, so I run a, an agency. We are uh, really heavy on the commercial and industrial side of HVAC, working with manufacturers and reps. Um, and we have some processes in place where we have our our mission, we have our why, we have our values, all of that's defined and articulated um, and on our website and in our materials. But is there some sort of, and we do do the DISC assessment, we've done Working Genius in the past as well. Is there a way for us to, this is the part I struggled with, is how do we find that value alignment right out of the gate other than just sending somebody our values and saying, do you align? Yes or no. Is there a way to kind of ensure with some sort of level of certainty that you are value aligned? Absolutely. And that is an amazing question as well. What I would do is look at your hiring questions and your company values. What does, pick a couple of behaviors that you expect to see that carry out those behaviors for each role, right? And then you're going to start asking leading questions in your interview, right? You, because, you know, I see a comment in here, right? Everybody looks good on paper. Yeah, they do, right? They've tailored that, right? That's, you want to know who are they? What are they really like? So instead of asking them the questions that they've rehearsed for over and over again from the job sites, ask them using the STAR method, okay? So when you're asking a question, you want to know what was the situation, what tasks needed to be accomplished? What action did you take that directly affected the outcome? And what were the results? And then you get to the behavioral part of it, right? Because then you can ask, okay, so if you had to do the same thing again, what would you change, right? You can learn from those questioning them like that. What are they really like a little bit underneath, right? You know, who do they learn from their mistakes, right? Are they too proud to admit that they were wrong about something, right? Like those are things you want to whittle out in that interview. Um, we always have multiple people in the interview. You don't want to do like a whole panel because you don't want them to feel like, oh my God, I'm being ganged up on. But I would say at least have a couple of managers from different departments in there, right? And people who, you know, you're doing DISC, right? Get people who are have different communication styles involved so that you can try to draw more out of that candidate and always show up for that interview prepared, right? Take 15 minutes before that for interview, read the resume, look, look into those people a little bit and then have an idea of what questions you want to ask because there's nothing worse than showing up like your hair is on fire and running in from another meeting and then you feel underprepared. And then you're like, oh my God, now what do I do? And you're like flustering for the paper. The, the candidate reads that as though you don't care. Right. Whereas if you're warm and open and you're just asking very casually, like, yeah, okay. So tell me about a time when you had a conflict with another employee. What was the situation? Right. They're going to start opening up. Love it. Thank you. That was yeah, sure. very, very, very helpful. I feel like I just went through like years of... <laughs> Um, business consulting support just in, in that method alone. So that's super yeah. helpful. We'll incorporate that. Thank you. Thank and you. Chris, someone was asking in the chat, um, the STAR method, is that situation, task, action, and results? Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of my favorite HR directors gave me that. And I was like, it was mind blowing, right? I've been interviewing people for like 15 years. And then she's like, no, 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 Chris, do it like this. And I was like, Oh my God, like total light bulb moment for me. No, this has all been so great. So many good questions. Um, thank you for all the insight and help, Chris. Um, anyone else? Anyone else got a question? Oh, Jamie says she likes to ask people people about their biggest pet peeve at work. 
<laughs> she says they open yes. wide. <laughs> they absolutely will, right? Tell me, you know, one of the questions yeah. I like with that is, you know, what's the worst day you ever had at work? And then what does a good day look like, right? Walk me through your dream day. What what happens? It'll help you find those gaps about the the Jamie's talking about here, right? Like maybe their biggest pet peeve is they feel like they can't get enough interaction from the warehouse, right? They're always waiting for parts and they're the kind of person who really wants to have everything at the beginning of the day sorted out. Like, well, maybe they're not great for a service tech role. Maybe you would prefer to have them on your install team. We've even had, I've had people interview before and they'll be like, well, I just hate it when, you know, you're trying to take a break and they just keep bothering you or, you know, like if you can't have a few minutes on the computer to look up your bank account or I don't know, like really dumb, dumb things. And I'm like, people, things you would never reveal about yourself, but because they got all in their emotions, it all just comes out. And then, you know, you can do with it, you know, or people who, people who nitpick, like it was close enough and you're like, okay, they're obviously not paying attention to detail. So stuff like that. Yeah, that's great, Jamie. Absolutely. And you're right, because you're clearly creating an environment where they feel comfortable enough to share that too, right? And and a lot of that definitely helps with, you know, when we go into those meetings, we need to be calm, we need to be prepared, you know, and it's a lot easier to have a friendly chat with them because they should be interviewing us as well, right? We It costs a lot of money to put your ads out there, to then go through whittling them down through resumes. And then you're investing a lot of time in the interview process. And for them, you know, the turnover isn't great either if they're not a good fit, right? So we we only want to hire the best fit for our environment. And it doesn't mean that they're a terrible person. It doesn't mean that they're not a great technician. They may just not be the right fit for our company. And we need to be okay, even if we're under the gun and we need more people, we need to be okay with saying, this isn't going to work every time. This isn't someone I need to hire right now. That's very good. Any other questions? I love Pam's note in the chat here. One of the questions she's using for Star is, tell me about a time when you felt very overwhelmed at work and how did you prioritize what to work on first? It gives you a lot of insight into how do they de-escalate themselves? How do they figure out what to work on? How, can they plan independently or are they going to come to you for help for everything? Great insight. Awesome. Well, Chris, we all enjoyed this so much and I enjoyed hearing everyone else's questions because it's all so relatable in, in one form or another. So um, thank you so much for sharing your, your time and your insight with us. I know we're all able to walk away with so many good things. Um, a few housekeeping items, if you will. I'm going to put some links down here in the chat for everybody. Um, a new thing we are implementing is called our um, Leading Lady and sorry, I'm trying to get into my regular chat. Krista, can you post that for me? Um, a leading lady is is a lady titan who kind of embodies the um, the, the spirit of lady titans. And um, we just want to give some highlights and some features to these. So we have a group, um, a, a link here where you can nominate somebody to do that. Um, we also have our swag shop. It is springtime. We are spring cleaning. We are trying to liquidate some of our swag. Um, so we everything is on sale for $5 or less, okay? There's some really good things, some water bottles. I know, stock yourself up, okay? $5 or less, the swag. Um, Krista's linking that there below. And then also Pantheon. We've heard it. Um, we've seen in the Facebook group some exciting things happening, going on, Um Pantheon registration is happening. Krista can link that for us there too as well. Um, I know some things they're going to be implementing is um, trying to get people to align and pre-register, if you will, for the breakout session so they can accommodate plenty of space for everyone to have that. And so excited for some of those things happening at Pantheon. Um, if you use that link that is listed there in the chat, that will give some credit to Lady Titans of how we're promoting it and promoting Pantheon. Um, the Lady Titans board is in the planning process of another fun, awesome Lady Titans event that will be happening at Pantheon. So more details to come, but it'll be it'll be worth the wait. Okay, I promise. Um, and then just a few things. Our next Lady Titans lounge, um, which is kind of just like 
girl chat, you know, sharing frustration, sharing wins, things like that, a very um, open and safe space just to um, connect and relate with other women. That is happening April 10th next or Wednesday, April 10th for the Lady Titans Lounge. And then our next spotlight series. So this same meeting um, is going to be Jen McKee um, from Key Heart Marketing. And they are all about social media. And so how to build out a social media calendar, um, make it interesting, give some good variety there. And so we would love to see everyone back again um, for our next spotlight series. So um, I see lots of things happening in the chat, fun things, booking for Pantheon, Chris, thank you so much. I know we all got so much from it. Um, really appreciate your time and your expertise today. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I saw so many powerhouse people here too. So like, really, like, I cannot tell you how much I love my company. So if you guys need a business consultant for developing your service Titan and leveraging it, please reach out. We would love to help you. Well, powerhouse, thanks for sharing Chris with us. So. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a great Tuesday. See y'all later.